Welcome everybody. I'm glad you could all come. And this week for our colloquium, we have Professor Ada Chen, and who's in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and across the street from us here. We're very happy to have her with us, and we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, very much, everyone, for inviting me here for the uh, opportunity to present my work. So basically, in my lab, uh, we focus on the uh, on image reconstruction and three-dimensional imaging and the image analysis uh, from medical and uh, industrial uh, objects. So uh, especially today, I will talk about digital tumor synthesis. So I have been <coughs> doing this research uh, for the past uh, quite a few years. So this is a limited dosage uh, three-dimensional imaging technology. I will focus on the breast cancer detection, uh, lung cancer uh, diagnosis, and also some other applications of this technology. At the breast cancer, uh, early breast cancer detection, then uh, our recent research on nanotechnology enabled to synthesis energy in conclusion. Okay, instruction time. So traditional X-ray imaging is a, a very common two-dimensional imaging technology that we have been used for uh, many years. It was developed uh, in uh, more than 100 years ago. So for example, if you have three-dimensional objects, like here, um, an apple and a brick, you take a projection image from the top, then your object will be projected onto the detector uh, as some kind of shadow or image. So this image is kind of uh, two-dimensional. So here, uh, on the right, we show a, a long image of the traditional X-ray projection. So based on this method, uh, doctors we can diagnose uh, what's going on um, for the chest image. So this is a, a three-dimensional computer tomography. We also call it CT. So CT was developed uh, since 1970s, and uh, it has been used uh, in hospitals very, uh, very commonly now. So this is a sample CT scanner. The patient uh, they found here, and uh, inside this gantry, there are detectors and uh, uh, X-ray tubes. So they rotate around the patient to take uh, multiple projection images. It's more like uh, take, take many projection images around the object. So we can do the software to reconstruct. So this way, we can show the slice images cutting through the object. So you can imagine like a, a, a graph, sliced graph, so for each slide, you can check if there is anything wrong. So this is basically the CT technology. And with CT technology, there are many disadvantages as well. For example, higher dosage. So higher dosage is always the biggest concern of CT. There are some studies, for example, for the young kids, if, if they uh, do CT images uh, frequently, maybe, they will get, uh, they will have higher cancer rate when they grow up. So high dosage will always be a uh, concern of the CT. And also, the expense will also be higher because you will need uh, more advanced technology, take multiple projection and then reconstruct. The acquisition time is also long. So for example, for some kind of uh, uh, real-time positioning, for some surgery, the CT will not be uh, feasible. So this is the uh, new technology of thermal synthesis. Uh, basically, we take multiple uh, projection images but from limited angle of view. Uh, it's same like uh, my arm. We take images uh, from limited view, so we not, not go around all the uh, 360 degrees, and then we reconstruct. For example, if you still have the same object, here we show three projection images from the right, middle, and left. <coughs> so your object will be projected onto the detector uh, relatively in a different location. Mm -hmm. And based on the limited projection images, we can reconstruct the original three-dimensional object. So this technology compared with traditional actually, it will be three-dimensional. So we still have three-dimensional slice information. Compared with CT, the dosage will be much lower. So can't be use comparable dosage uh, as that of the traditional actually. So we divide the dosage of the traditional actually uh, <coughs> multiple projections, and based on that, we do the uh, uh, reconstruction, and the cost will be lower complexity as well. Okay, now let's look at some kind of applications uh, in the chest imaging. So this shows a prototype 
of a tiered multi-phase device uh, at my previous uh, group uh, of Duke uh, University. So we collaborated with GE Healthcare to uh, develop the device. And currently, TS to is, is commercially available now. So this is the traditional X-ray detector uh, of the two-dimensional X-ray, traditional X-ray imaging. And this one, wrong one, is the uh, TS phantom to mimic the human uh, tissue. And this one is the traditional X-ray tube. So when we upgrade to a Timothy's device, we can make the tube up and down, to move it up and down to take a sequential order of projection images. So if we look at it uh, in a mathematical way, and this shows the tube's location, and this is now detector, so we can take multiple projection images, and we can reconstruct it slide by slide. Okay, next. And here we show some uh, examples of the human subject. The left one is the traditional X-ray uh, projection image, the traditional uh, radiographic technology. The right one is the reconstructed uh, slide. Click uh, now. Okay. So if we compare, the yellow circle will show. Can I turn off the light? Maybe one to do an image. Okay. Thank you. Is that enough? Yeah. Is that enough? enough? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this one, the result is that we'll find it's clear. This patient is, everything is clear. But uh, at right, actually, uh, on one reconstruction slide, you can see a small uh, nodule, we call it a nodule area of the lung image. Okay, yeah. If we check another location, here, you will, you will think it's clear again. But with the Timothy, this image, actually, here you can identify a small circle. And uh, for the same patient, the same human subject, we'll find it clear again, but with the Chabotensis technology, we can, we can notice the loading. And also we can, we can look at it as a movie. Just a click. Okay, now it's all. So you can uh, you can actually say the uh, see the slide passing through the passing through the uh, object from the front to the back one side to the other uh, basically. It's like uh, the uh, sectional wheel of your lung and the stage of one point side by another one. So compared with the two-dimensional X-ray projection image, uh, you have much better wheel and the dosage is comparable. Okay, so all the vessels and all the structures. So next, let's look at the breast imaging uh, due to breast tumor So breast cancer uh, is the most common cancer uh, in women. Uh, based on statistics, over 10% uh, American women will get breast cancer during a lifetime, and 30 to 40% uh, get breast cancer and they die from it. So it's very essential to improve the breast imaging technology to detect the breast cancer at an early stage. And, uh, to try to cure that. Okay, so currently mammography, uh, I'm not sure if I'm, everyone knows about mammography. So it's also a traditional two-dimensional imaging technology. But just in a breast imaging field, we call that mammography. It's similar like a long, long image. Okay, so it currently it's the most important tool in a breast imaging uh, field. And it's also two-dimensional. So if you have three-dimensional objects, uh, from overlapped tissues from the block of view. Okay, so with the Timothy's prototype, it's similar, uh, just upgrade the traditional uh, system. So until we are taking picture from the top, now you can make it rotate. If you rotate, uh, it limits the view to a multiple uh, projection. Okay, and the overlap, uh, we, we are doing some research on image reconstruction algorithms. 
So basically, we have all different versions uh, of our uh, categories of popular algorithms, like shift and add, point by point back projection, or some iterative methods, uh, some kind of future technologies, and uh, uh, mathematical or algebraic reconstruction or mat matrix uh, or transform, a lot of things, and we can also blind different algorithms together uh, to improve the reconstruction. Okay, I think this part, uh, mathematical people <laughs> will have interest and we, we can have some collaborations that, that will also be great. So for example, some algorithms, shift and add, it's a very uh, basic and a mathematical way to reconstruct three-dimensional objects. And it also serves as the foundation of other uh, algorithms. So basically, this is the object and the new one shows your reconstruction slide. This is our detector. You can imagine if the asteroid cube moves here, uh, the center of your reconstruction site will be projected at P sub i. So the easy way people can think is to fit the entire projection image back to the center to try to line up uh, your central structure, it's more like a microscope or something. So when you have multiple projection images, you can shift your projection image accordingly one by one then sum them up uh, as your final reconstruction. So this method we call that shift and add. <coughs> Another one is called the back point by point back projection. So shift and add basically we deal with all the projection images together. Just shift accordingly, then average. So for back projection, we go to each individual pixel for each individual point on the reconstruction plane. For example, point A, then we track, we calculate where it will be projected onto the detector because all your tube parameters are known and you design your tube. So we can, we can track all the information of PK, PJ, and PI for this case, then do the average as the reconstruction value of your point A. So this is called back projection. We can use this method to reconstruct all single pixels our reconstruction plane mm -hmm. and reconstruct three-dimensional objects mm -hmm. one by one. <laughs> so another one is called maximum likelihood expectation maximization, uh, MLEM. This algorithm was originally um, used in the PET, positron emission to mongrel pit. It's another uh, nuclear medicine uh, in the medical imaging field. And Harvard University, they applied this one to the breast tumor imaging a few years ago. Okay, so this method basically uh, is iterative one. And uh, we can consider a three-dimensional object as many voxels in a, in a space. Many small voxels in a space. And each, each plane can represent a single reconstruction type. Okay, so for each projection location, you can consider there will be many projection lines, many asteroid beams passing through this uh, three-dimensional model to make an image on a projection plane on a detector. So we can calculate the uh, exact location when your uh, single projection line interprets this uh, the three-dimensional model and then use the uh, Poisson distribution to update uh, iteration. So basically for this, Computation method, there will be some kind of sparse metrics and a lot of computation for each projection line. Uh, and it will be time consuming, uh, for example, several hours of computation. And because for medical imaging, clinical applications, uh, time will be a concern for each patient. Uh, so there are a lot of work in this field to try to uh, accelerate the calculation based on the, for example, Parallel computing or sparse metrics, a lot of things. Okay, uh, we also have some metrics in more small things um, based on the metrics consideration of the of the modeling how you can reconstruct. So if you look at the same picture, uh, same like the mathematical reconstruction, we will have points here on the reconstruction slide. It will be projected. Uh, on the detector at P sub J location. But for other planes, P 
it will also cause the so if you have another plane, other structures above that, it will also cause the problem at P sub I location. So if we shift if we shift the original projection image with PJ location, actually the PR other images will also be shifted as well, other shadow, and it will cause a blur at a certain location. So this method basically we can calculate the blurring function other planes, what kind of functions other planes will, will cause on a reconstruction slide to so make it as a matrix. So here we can call it as S. So each, each slide will have cause problem on other slides. So we can have a very function. And uh, we think the final reconstruction shift and add small things in reconstruction are basically young structures to convert with the blurry function. So you can make them as matrix uh, multiplication. So you make a tensor there, that's why you make a tensor product for all the image pixels there. Uh -huh. You make a tensor, a tensor product, is that what the rotation size? What do you mean tensor product? Tensor, uh, so you have some tensor multiplication. Is uh -huh. that the thing you want? Yes. Is that what you work on? No, the, the, the circle, oh. the circle on the time side. Yeah. Which one? Convolution. It's not oh, just traditional convolution. Just traditional yes, convolution. Yes, now it's convolution. Ah, okay. Just okay. convolution. Okay. okay. <coughs> and this algorithm actually can be improved. Uh, as you're working. Okay. Because now it's, it's based on two-dimensional plane. Uh, but if you have an motion, uh, it will not be as line. So the shift is everything will not be just uh, as a single line. Okay, so we can make it as matrix. Uh, and do the forward transform, it was for transform to change, go back to the real structure. So this this math basically is a matrix conversion uh, techniques to reconstruct. Okay, there are also some other methods called filtered bar projection. So this algorithm is preferred by most manufacturers and because it's fast uh, and uh, uh, easy to apply. Okay, so basically you can consider in the photo space now. We are doing a projection image after <coughs> the something of your photo space. And uh, we are doing multiple rejections based on the central slide theorem. And uh, with photo transform, we can apply filters to, to control noise. Okay, and we can also blend different algorithms together. For example, if we find one algorithm has better high frequency uh, components, another one has better low frequency uh, response, we can try to combine them together to get better reconstruction. For example, we have matrix method and the filter method. We can match those two, match the gain and offset. Then we can do a sliding, basically uh, do an average of the measuring uh, slices and use Gaussian filters to blend. And then finally, we can get our blended algorithm. Okay. So basically, those algorithms is I like the Okay, here we can show some kind of uh, region of interest, the small areas, uh, cutting from the entire image. So those objects are called secretions. Basically, they are small calcified dots inside the breast. And a certain distribution <coughs> of the shape of the calcification may mean uh, malignant uh, breast cancer or just the benign uh, tissue areas. So this, this column shows the matrix reconstructed one, the second column shows the filtered one, and last one shows the combined one. So the first one may have better high frequency components like the edge is uh, uh, clear, the second one may have some neighboring uh, vessel, and we can combine them together to try to get better reconstruction. Okay, now we show you some kind of uh, mastectomy specimen uh, example. Basically, we cut the tissue cut from the uh, human subject. So at this area, it's, it's a middle projection, uh, similar to the mammography. So this area, you can, you can have some kind of object that's not so clear. And the right one, it's a movie. <laughs> okay, basically, it's a movie. <laughs> we can reconstruct slice by slice, passing through the object with similar dosage. Okay, we have a, uh, basically you can have, yeah, you can have a small way, so like a chest image, just to show the reconstructed slices passing through the object. Okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> this is a human subject. So this is the detailed mammography uh, of the of the patient, and uh, uh, this big red dot is the calcification. A big calcification. This patient uh, she also has some kind of mass. And we can do the tomography reconstruction of the same of, uh, same human subject with similar dosage. Actually, we can reconstruct a much better uh, images of, of this uh, human subject. So this is our future past projection and BP reconstruction uh, with some tomography technology. We can see uh, our vessels and the tissues in a much better way. Uh, another example. Uh, this is the traditional mammography, the current technology. And at this area, uh, it's not so clear. So the uh, the largest the breast imaging, they try to use a magnifying lens. This is one kind of try to see the uh, same uh, area in a in a better view to use magnifying lens. So take a second view. And with the breast tomography, okay, you can you can compare the same area with the tomography technology. It will be much better. And we can also feel it as a huge mushroom now. Great. <laughs> you, can, you can see the size that size happens to the object. And this is another example uh, of the human uh, subject breast imaging. Uh, this, this is the current technology and we use the magnifying lens. And we can do the small uh, imaging with the similar dosage to view this object. And for the same location uh, with the mapping this technology and reconstruction, we can see it And can also wait and wait at the three dimensional moon. Okay, I want to point out uh, for the chest for the chest imaging or lung imaging area, CT is uh, uh, available. So you can go CT, and that most of will have much lower dosage and uh, faster. Uh, with breast imaging, uh, having CT is not available because the, the tissue areas and the condition. So CT is not available for breast imaging. Uh, with small cases, uh, we can control the breast imaging um, greatly. Okay, we also do the image quality um, evaluation to basically to optimize the imaging configuration. For example, how to use the limited dosage, how many projection images we can have, and how big the, the view angle can be. So we call them as uh, optimization of imaging configuration. So basically, we do a signal and the noise uh, measurement in the spatial domain and also in the frequency domain, and then combine them together to evaluate the reconstructed image quality, optimize the reconstruction algorithm and the range configuration. So we can measure the um, modulation transfer function. This is the uh, resolution for the signal properties uh, in a spatial domain. And also the noise power spectrum. Basically, it's the uh, uh, noise property and noise power spectrum. And then combine them together as the noise equipment function AQ. It's the signal to noise ratio in a spatial domain. Uh, in a frequency. So we can we can we can do the uh, image quality evaluation based on a physical measurement and the some kind of confidence simulation. So with this system MTF, basically we are talking about the, the entire system's uh, resolution property. So we can do the uh, physical measurement with the MTF and use uh, there are typical different ways like the split, edge, or, or, or different we can use add method uh, with some kind of routines and codes to measure that and we can measure different angles. Okay. So for example, this is the detector. This is the detector we put the product at this can here with certain uh, rotation and the measure that uh, to compile a system MTF. Okay, reconstruction MTF will basically do some kind of computer simulations to compile different reconstruction algorithms. So we can uh, simulate simulate the projection images and then <coughs> then compile the uh, spatial property. Okay, for example, we can we can simulate the projection images. We can assume there is an in-house at your 
at a certain location, three dimensionally, from a simulated projection, maybe, and we will reconstruct algorithm to reconstruct and to value the result. Yeah, we use a uh, retreat method and a different kind of uh, computation. So we can combine them together as the total uh, modulation transfer function, basically to evaluate the signal performance. And we also do some noise, noise uh, measurement, physical measurement. We have some uh, functions, flex functions, to mimic the flex tissue, and put it on the uh, detector. So we can take the flat images with the phantom and then uh, use some kind of noise power spectrum. Uh, it's the it's the general uh, imaging parameters when we evaluate for the image coverage purpose. Okay, so finally we can combine them together to to do an image quality evaluate, uh, evaluation to guide the uh, configuration optimization and the reconstruction. Okay, so here we show an example of the uh, noise power, uh, NEQ, noise equivalent quantum. So those seven represent seven different imaging acquisition modes we can have. Uh, we have 49 or 28, 5, 13. Those numbers represent how many projection images we are, uh, we are acquired. For example, we have 49 projections or 25 projections. And some of them have narrow angle, some of them have uh, wider angle. Like how many angles we are going to, to generate projection images. And we can evaluate you know, image quality. This is a full filtered back projection, a single algorithm. one. We can compile our server together to pick up the best one to, to guide our uh, image acquisition. And we can also compile different algorithms. Okay, so basically the writing NEQ is the uh, it's the image quality measurement uh, method uh, as some kind of standard metric uh, uh, metric in the metric imaging field. And we use this method to evaluate our uh, image reconstruction and uh, uh, optimize, to optimize the calculation. Okay, next I'd like to talk about uh, carbon nanotube based uh, X-ray uh, synthesis imaging for breast cancer detection. Uh, this is a project we collaborated with uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and the NC State and also uh, Siemens joint venture. Okay, this is the uh, device uh, we have been developing to, to try to improve the uh, uh, breast imaging uh, technology. And uh, compared with the previous uh, examples we showed, orange only the, the prototype is rotate around the uh, above the detector along a uh, eccentric line, something like an arc. So this one basically can say it's parallel. It's parallel and all the cells will be filled, fixed. Orange only for the design if you only had one single cell, you can move it. Right? As a camera, you can move it. And this one, we can have individual 25 combination based uh, X-ray de uh, device. So all the cells will be just uh, steel. So we can remove the uh, uh, motion to the associated with the movement. And because it's nanotechnology based, so the price will be much cheaper. Okay, this is uh, the picture of uh, the device at our collaborator's uh, lab physics department. So here is the detector uh, and uh, a breast function. This is a fixed x ray shot, not in x ray shot, uh, based on the carbon nanotube technology. Okay, and our lab, uh, we are uh, doing image reconstruction and imaging configuration optimization. So we modify the reconstruction as parallel imaging uh, configuration, and then do reconstruction and conversion. So for example, we can, we can look at some kind of preliminary uh, reconstruction studies. We have uh, many different dimension studies, like uh, some objects like a sponge or the, the breast biopsy phantom, this kind of thing. So these uh, uh, images from the sponge phantom, <coughs> basically you can have some objects embedded inside the sponge and take extra imaging and then reconstruct. The top one is the projection image, uh, you cannot identify clearly. The bottom one is reconstruction from different algorithms we have and try to identify the object. 
uh, this is all published the day of the uh, breast biopsy function. So for the, for the hospitals, we have some kind of function to try to train the medical uh, people to, to do the biopsy correctly and act, uh, to improve the biopsy accuracy. So you can do the uh, phantom study of those kind of phantom and inside the biopsy phantom there are some called as mass and constitution. <coughs> mass basically is some kind of small uh, small area which can identify cancer. Constitution are also some kind of small cause by the dog. And those two are the most important targets in the breast imaging field. So we have different algorithms to reconstruct and those shows the small region of interest uh, inside, inside the center. We also do computer simulation study of the small synthesis to optimize your uh, image configuration. Like we can uh, simulate the small synthesis images and then we can chart to count out different algorithms and how many angles we need, how many prediction images we need. Okay, so those shows some of our work and we are doing a computer simulation and uh, study. We so basically compare different algorithms. This, for example, should be math and projection, the two basic mathematical reconstruction. Now we can simulate original image, screen reconstruct to evaluate the, the impulse response. So how sharp it can go, and to which one is better, and how many projections can show a better result. For example, this this one is we have 63 projections with 50 degrees of view angle. And this is 11, on 11 projections with 50 angle, degree angle, how with the reconstruction of the Okay, so basically we are collaborating with uh, UNC and uh, uh, John Wancho and Simmons to do an image reconstruction uh, and to develop the next generation uh, breast imaging device. And uh, our research basically includes image reconstruction algorithms imaging configuration, configuration and optimization based on the image quality and the calibration uh, accuracy in image. Okay, so basically to maintain this is a new technology uh, that many experts will uh, to revolutionize the traditional x-ray. So the purpose of to this is try to uh, replace the traditional x-ray imaging because by using a similar dosage, similar time, but change that is three dimensional because you know, much better than those. And also in other applications when CT is not a, a big phone or when CT has big and so high dosage, some of these will also be a very good uh, substitute. So it can also be used in a wide range of industrial applications, for example, homeland security, uh, for actually detection, and uh, clinical applications like breast imaging, chest imaging, uh, abdominal, orthopedic, and the dental. So when the traditional x-ray can be used, uh, the three-dimensional imaging will also have a very bright future. Okay, so compared with the standard two-dimensional imaging method, uh, we are doing a three-dimensional reconstruction, three-dimensional information. And uh, compared with the CT, the current CT, we are using much lower dosage. So for example, for the breast tumor synthesis, currently the dosage is less than 1.5 times of a single group. The breast may be typically if you do a marble phase, you have a CC view from top to bottom, and single view and another 45 degrees and uh, oh, uh, two wheel. We are using about 1.5 times of a single view uh, to finish the entire uh, projection images. So for chest imaging, coming is comparable to lateral view. So chest imaging basically you do PA, posterior anterior, from back to front and the lateral from the side. So our dose is compiled to a, a single side view. And uh, uh, basically our lab, we can do our reconstruction algorithm uh, to reconstruct the dimensional objects. And we also do the image quality and other uh, associated uh, things to optimize the image configuration. And now we show some kind of uh, promising fields of tumor synthesis. Uh, some of them, scientists are doing investigation 
some of them are still very new, but some of them uh, only uh, some new group is doing that, for example. So chest imaging, it's the uh, it's the first tomatensis uh, field that that uh, people investigated, and the device is uh, commercially available now at GE Healthcare uh, since 2008. Second one, breast imaging, uh, many uh, manufacturers <coughs> are doing that, and uh, a single company uh, has got the FDA approval in 2010. But still. Uh, Many other companies are still doing clinical trial or doing research to try to get a <coughs> Okay, kidney imaging. Uh, our group, we have interest in the kidney tomatoes imaging as well. Uh, in my lab, we have a CM as device, some digital imaging as device. They are interested in uh, making it as tomatoes uh, is capable to do the kidney imaging application. And angiography, uh, vessel, we can do the image traditional way of. Angiography, you can use battery, but you can also use the three-dimensional chart. And also paddock, if you have some kind of implant or some kind of uh, path inside your human body, typically you will uh, or frequently be check if the positioning is right. And uh, if you go CT, you will have higher dosage and cost will be expensive. But if you go to a dentist, you can also have three-dimensional information. Uh, therapy, imaging guided therapy is also a, a very interesting field. <coughs> so for the traditional radiation therapy, uh, people will get CT first to do the positioning, then send it to the room uh, to the therapy directly. And there are also some research for the imaging guided therapy for the rapid positioning. So you can, the patient, when the patient will send inside the therapy room, they can do the repositioning again, okay, try to see if everything is still correct. So a quick three-dimensional imaging method like small sensors would be very helpful. So some of these groups are doing an imaging guided work as well with small sensors. Okay, pediatric. For the case, the, the dosage would be a big concern. So if you have three-dimensional imaging uh, like small sensors, for the pediatric, uh, for the children, that's imaging it would be very uh, helpful. And also non-destructive uh, testing uh, for some kind of mechanical, I mean, that's real hard. Can you can just just show my screen? Okay, or homeland security for the digital things. So basically, uh, some of things has a very bright future in all the traditional uh, actual fields, including medical and industrial fields. And our lab, we <coughs> have engaged in the chest imaging, breast imaging, and the, uh, within the future, can be imaging for this area. So basically, our lab, we are doing the uh, interdisciplinary research and the application, including engineering, so, uh, engineering biomedical applications, mathematics, science, and industrial. Uh, besides for the medical imaging uh, or, or three-dimensional imaging, uh, we also do two-dimensional image uh, pattern, for example, pattern recognition, image analysis. Uh, we also did a project with the company to, to do a computer recognition some kind of uh, corn uh, to the uh, corn grading, the green green color, because which grade it is, so you can put an object on a on image and directly you can use CCD cameras, take pictures, and based on those images we can uh, automatically detach at a single object to the cracks, with material, something like that. So we can do three dimensional imaging stuff and also two dimensional image analysis. So that's my last uh, Okay, we, we, we thank our collaborators at different institutions and uh, all that uh, has been supported by federal agencies and the uh, and the uh, different, uh, different uh, agencies as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? I have one. Mm -hmm. If you were to think of the food, the pro of the imagery construction problem as an error correction problem in which the biologically reasonable structures, maybe the interesting ones occurring in a well-defined area were the code words. Mm -hmm. Would there be enough code distance to help you at all? Uh, it depends on applications. Okay. For example, for different applications. Uh, basically, the general idea is similar, like uh, <coughs> limited angle uh, multiple projections in reconstruct. 
And for each different application, like a chat, you have mm -hmm. around 180 uh, meet, uh, centimeters away, or grass, and some kind of different imaging geometries, or other things. So basically, it depends on application, and we can optimize. Uh, we, we are also doing a, a computer <coughs> simulation study. So, for example, si simulate an ideal system, like a, <coughs> it can, ideally, it can be applied to all related to the international uh, imaging way. So we can have input at the distance, at the tube's location, make everything as computer as well. Yeah, so I don't mean the, the physical distance of the apparatus. Uh -huh. I mean, um, between two structures mm -hmm. that could actually be observed in an image. Are they different enough that uh -huh. one could say, this detected data is not something that we could realistically observe, uh -huh. so we can suppose that it is the realistic structure that it's closest to. Okay. Is there so enough distance? In yeah, that that's, that's, that's called the resolution. Actually, that's called the spatial resolution in an imaging space. How far away two objects should be? If they are too close enough, if they are kind of really close, you cannot distinguish. And if they are some small enough, so that's resolution. How about the imaging resolution? Uh, to identify two objects. For example, breast imaging, we can identify 50 microns. So we can go as small as 50. Uh, for long, we can go 200 microns. Uh, uh, for the typical <coughs> breast imaging, the typical uh, requirement, if you have calcification, you need a 10 pixels. So, so as if, if they are small, if they are too small, we can Yes. And, and uh, uh, another issue is <coughs> CT. CT with CT technology, it can provide, currently can provide the best resolution. You can identify higher dosage and go all along. So you can see it in a much better way. You can have higher resolution. Uh, to my sense, it's kind of like a video product between CT and the traditional X-ray. But for some theory, CT is not a physical. You can think about small senses <coughs> and, and also, uh, City has higher dosage, so we can also try to use it. There is some study. So for the chest imaging, chest imaging because small senses is uh, commercially available now. So if we say CT can identify 100 percent, then with small senses we can identify 83 percent. So we cannot say all them, but we can still identify 83 with the limited dosage. So, uh, is is what you're asking for the identification or detection and Well, I have a question which may be related to this. Uh -huh. So, suppose I take two images, uh -huh. and uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, of, of a really simple example, but, but, but suppose I take two images and they both detect that there are two structures. Uh -huh. And there are in fact three structures, and it's just that from the first angle it's behind one of the, uh -huh. the one in the back is behind one of the two in front, and the second, from the second angle it's behind the other one. And so both images tell me there are two structures and there are actually three. Uh, uh, so one needs to sort of make sure that one is taking enough images uh, to, to really maybe there's a certain amount of uh, educated guesswork that has to be uh, uh, involved in, in reconstructing a three-dimensional image from a set of well, for example, in this case, two, but even if you extend to more than two, there will still be a certain level of educated guesswork involved. Mm -hmm. And do the algorithm sort of uh, express that in some of the Yeah, it's a very essential question in the medical imaging field, uh, mm -hmm. like what Dr. Kawaji is asking. So basically, you're asking about a very essential thing. Uh, the the three-dimensional imaging. Three-dimensional imaging, basically, everything will be all that. Mm -hmm. Three-dimensional, we are trying to identify the real structure. Mm -hmm. What's the real? We can have two or three or, or five. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the medical imaging, there is no perfect thing which can really reflect just the real. Mm -hmm. and we are always trying to approach the real structure. Mm -hmm. So to improve imaging technology, because you cannot cut. Right? So we try to identify the real thing inside. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's the reason why FD approval and everything will be needed. Mm -hmm. So why is the imaging technology itself? For reconstruction, we are trying to use limited uh, information to reconstruct mm -hmm. three-dimensional. So how to optimize, how to improve our reconstruction, 
how to uh, optimize their configuration and the system. That's one issue. <coughs> Another issue is kind of like uh, uh, clinical trial, human subject, uh, FD approval, uh, those kind of studies, and also ethical things. And if you develop uh, like three different prototype systems, three different imaging technology, optical, battery, awesome, for example, right? If those three bring you totally different results or some kind of different result, how you how you how you consider. So for the medical imaging field, typically for each different application, we can have primary imaging technology and uh, supplemental. For example, breast imaging, mammography, or two dimensional X-ray is primary. If you have some concerns, you will be sent for mammography first. And if if they want to have additional things, they will go outbound for you MRI. Mm -hmm. So there will be some primary and then additional things. Because you can imagine for different imaging technologies, <coughs> they may give you kind of some kind of mm -hmm. a little uh, difference even in the sub right? So, so that's that's really <laughs> the essential, very essential thing uh, in my opinion is because we are dealing with the human subject patients, not to the uh, other things. Yeah. For, for your, uh, your approach, you rely on a lot of algorithms. Mm -hmm. I think you probably sometimes you use some commercial algorithm. Now, what is the percentage you need to write your own algorithm? Uh, we don't use, actually, we don't use commercial our code. <laughs> we wrote by now ourselves. Oh, you wrote all the codes Yeah, we, we have all the codes of our own version. Uh, typically, they have publications, right? Uh, because it's kind of like a trend, it's like history. So what is this is it's a new technology. Because you can imagine we need a fast, fast speed detector. It's, a, it's like camera, you need to take camera these pictures very quickly, right? Take multiple CT, you can take it all around the patient lives there, right? But for two things, it's just the patient is there and finish and go. So you need a fast detector. Uh, the first detector was developed by GE uh, in 1990. So the tech although the idea, the concept existed uh, since uh, 1932, but, but the real system was not available until after 1990 uh, due to the fast detector. After you have the fast detector, you can just simply upgrade your system and make it rotate, or, or, or you can do some kind of fix to thing. So you can have this technology. So what, what language do you use? You use computer language? Uh, we, our language is C, and C. Uh, my students they use MATLAB. <laughs> but for the manufacturers, uh, uh -huh. um, they have their own. Most of the manufacturers they are using future map projection, mm -hmm. so VP, and uh, they, they use their own. Uh, and, and in this field, uh, actually the reconstruction algorithm itself, uh, there is a professor at uh, UPenn, the University of Pennsylvania, um, radiology department. He is doing uh, image reconstruction, uh, and uh, also he has his own startup company. So they sell the license. So it's kind of like a really commercial, not like our simple version. So make it expensive. I, I think you can imagine that we are also doing something like this thing as a uh, algorithm. So to make it as commercial. A click buttons, then you, you can reconstruct and uh, make it as uh, like a, a electronic game, like a rotate, right? A display, rotate, and uh, something like medical, if you use the mouse to draw a line, then how, how long it will be the distance, those kind of things. And they sell license for uh, $50,000 for each license. <laughs> because it's medical uh, related to build, uh, so, so they are doing the do you know the CT, the 3D CT is mm -hmm. available locally or right now the images and those? Uh, for our breast imaging, like uh, the mall, inside the mall, the company of breast imaging group, uh -huh. they are planning to have a small thing, this device. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are, they are planning to have one. Because one company is selling that. Right? Uh -huh. And uh, they got FD approval. Okay. So, and, and uh, actually the three-dimensional imaging uh, concept can be applied to many applications. It's not even to add three, for example, uh, if I have interest in imaging uh, algorithms, any kind of uh, three-dimensional thing, you can apply a limited room like uh, something, right? 
do the surface reconstruction, or inside you can go through okay, the inside reconstruction. Um, it's really, basically, it's a three dimensional, I think it's three dimensional data imaging. I will be at the example of that Yeah, this thing you mentioned is very important because uh, recently one of the popular thing is to use the robotics to do the surgery. Mm -hmm. Because you are a human being do the surgery is not so stable or not so uh, and when you they use the robots. Mm -hmm. And but when they use the robots and then you have to be very good the imaging identification there mm -hmm. and the accuracy in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's a, actually it's a system that is Springfield Hospital. I think it's Springfield. We have two uh, deranged optic neurosurgery system. So it's a, what I'm talking, it's a optic system to the <coughs> neurosurgery. Because right. inside the brain, yes. uh, <laughs> we have some collaborators at the medical school at Springfield. Uh, so, so they train so they train the doctors to control uh, uh, the robot. Yeah, control the robot now, not to do the surgery by themselves. Because, <laughs> because uh, there was a case, uh, a patient, uh, she was uh, a bus driver and she got some kind of uh, hand shaking problem and then she went to medical imaging MRI and finally found uh, she had a tumor and the tumor inside the brain pushes uh, push the vision vision system so that's the reason uh, she had some problems with the hand anyway uh, so, so they did uh, the logic surgery okay. system if you do a real open surgery, <laughs> <laughs> like a gallery, it's a gallery, but, case but for the logging one, it's kind of easy. So, so they design the programs, then they design the programs and they use needle to go through the, uh, the uh, nose. And yeah. go through the nose to remove the tumor directly. So you don't have any open surgery, but it's uh, It's very expensive. Um, it's the most expensive. Uh, facility in the Spring Hospital mm -hmm. because we have some students uh, that have a biomedical engineering graduate program uh, in the College of Engineering. So they, they typically bring graduate students to Springfield <coughs> uh, and uh, they visit, visit the facility for this object system. The, the risk of you is uh, much lower than a human being handle because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's <Yeah. laughs> safer. Like yeah, probably like one can shape more Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so delicate, right? There are also some imaging guided surgery uh, research. So that's a big picture, not sure how our lab is doing, but basically for the imaging uh, or, or image analysis uh, in the medical applications, you can have diagnostic imaging, like what you are doing. Uh, do the detection uh, and uh, therapy, imaging guided therapy to improve the treatment uh, and uh, also imaging guided surgery. Uh, during the surgery, you can have imaging guided, okay. or you can kill it just to uh, image analysis to come to the idea of diagnosis to try to reduce the, the result. You just ask the computers to identify which area I think is wrong. In the uh, <coughs> matrix invariant approach, what does mm -hmm. the matrix represent? Uh, the, matrix, the, yeah. Yeah, the matrix basically is the blurring function. For oh, example, okay. if you have 20 projections, uh, like uh, make a nine, uh, for example, 20 reconstructions. So uh, on a single reconstruction size, you may have 19 from other auto plane, from other structures. Mm -hmm. So you can have a matrix, and 19 by 19. Or that's my 20 caused by all different projection locations and other neighborings. Okay. 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 Well, why do you use the linear integration <coughs> for the MTI? Uh, linear integration, basically, you can imagine you have a projection line. Uh, this is a detector, and uh, you have individual pixels, like mm -hmm. many grids. But when you have a projection line, the line can, uh, can be projected onto. Uh, long integer location, uh, fractional okay. length. So you can distribute to the everything, the everything yeah, yeah, to neighboring oh, okay. so okay. linear integration. And uh, we also with linear integration, sometimes we are trying to combine two measurements together. Like for one measurement, uh, we measure the signal you have x-axis defined in one way. So we are measuring the noise, the x-axis is defined in another way. And we try to com combine those things. Okay. Yeah. 
So I have a question is, can we understand the more pivot you take, the more co quality of the 3D reconstructed object you have? Mm -hmm. So typically, if I have more dosage, right, a dosage exposure level, the dosage, more projection images, wider angle, you can have a better view. Right? But, but with the dosage, it will be a concern with limited dosage, how you want to distribute. So uh, we are collaborating with our collaborators, and we have some fun image and uh, computer simulation, but other groups, uh, you know, we know Chicago, there is a group, uh, very famous group. They are also just uh, doing purely simulation. So simulation of the distribution uh, optimization, like they divide all the dosage into two cups. Uh, one of them, one half, give it to central directly. And uh, another half just distribute to all other projection. So we, we are doing evenly distribution. So then we have one and a 20 projection. So each one will have one 20. And in Chicago, uh, they are doing some, something like half give to middle, and another half give to the rest of the mountain. So they are doing purely uh, mathematical simulation. Uh, optimization. So they simulate everything. I have another question um, because there is a new technology called face face detection. Mm -hmm. You take one picture, you can construct a 3D. Is that possible for X-ray? Uh, I'm not quite sure about <laughs> <laughs> this one, but uh, but uh, typically, uh, you know, we are using the same uh, technology. Uh, we are using the same technology. 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 We are using the or you can purely just reconstruct the surface. So it's not like a Google map or GPS, the same same theory. You look from different views. You can either reconstruct surface or reconstruct inside. Depends on the If I have yeah. actually one way you can you know, we have two eyes, that's two. Yeah, you two can, can just reconstruct three. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, the theory is similar like a uh, three dimensional reconstruction. Mm -hmm. We've clearly not exhausted the interesting parts of the subject, but I know that the hour is advanced and people have other obligations. Hope many of you will be able to join us upstairs for some refreshments. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.